when do the passaggio from the chest voice to the head voice, I would like to know if you are using the belting technique, the twain technique, both or none of them. All right, so, so Claudio, English isn't his first language, and we get sort of these funny questions, so you have to be able to sort of interpret them. Um, paraphrase, this is, this is, um, when do the passaggio from the chest voice to the head voice? Basically, that translates to, um, I would like to know if you're using belting technique, the twin technique. So basically, I'm training from my chest voice through the vocal break into my head voice, Claudio says. So Claudio's doing the right thing. He's got the right visual auditory imagery. He's thinking about bridging and connecting. He realizes that's sort of the whole point, okay, to get to bridge the registers, and he's working on that. And his question is, when I go from the chest voice through the vocal break into the head voice, do I use belting techniques, which would be like the damp and release onset, the attack and release onset, larynx dampening. Do I use belting techniques, or do I use twang technique, or both, or none of them? Okay, well, you're going to use both. Um, belting techniques all have twang in them, okay? So when you're using belting techniques such as a plosive, a dampen and release onset, and pulling up a melodic fifth, which is one of the workouts that we do. It's one of the integrated training routines on the training page. When you're doing that, you'll be doing it with twang, okay? So vocal twang, just to clarify this, the backstory is it's just compression on the vocal folds, all right? You engage the area of the sphincter and his buddies, other little muscles inside the larynx, and it gives us vocal fold compression. It's, it's a physical vocal mode that we call vocal twang, all right? Pretty much vocal twang, as long as you're not blowing wind when you're, when you're training or singing, you're probably engaging in vocal twang. For most students, vocal twang is a physical configuration that sort of comes naturally once you get going. Um, in fact, phase one on the training page, the warm-ups, that's one of the main things that it's doing for you. It's getting vocal full compression balanced with um, subvital respiration, okay? It, other, in other words, it's building good, healthy vocal twang for you, okay? But if you're working on belt techniques, you'll have vocal twang, okay? So one thing is sort of a group of techniques. The other is a physical mode. And when we work on this group of techniques called belt techniques to take the chest voice high, all right, you're going to have twang. So answering your question, Claudio, both, all right, both. And I recommend that you, that you, that you um, work to, to take the chest voice high and to get through the vocal break. I recommend that you, that you do dampen and release onsets, plosive onsets, learn how to do them in the course and on the training page. And you do dampen and release onsets and you pull through the vocal break into the head voice. Okay, and you do glissando or sirens. In the program, I'm offering you melodic fist sirens, but it doesn't have to be melodic fist. It's a good place to start, but you can do octaves or thirds or any interval you want to do. Uh, more importantly is that you do a dampen and release, a plosive onset, and you pull through the vocal break into the head voice. I guess I'll show you how. This is a belting technique. middle C to uh, G4, which sits in my head voice. I'm going to do it an onset, which is the dap and release onset, or onsets that start with plosives, uh, B, T, D, P, uh, G, K, okay? In the program, we do a lot of Bs. It's, it's like a good, it's a good plosive to train with, although you can train with all of them. Um, B tends to be sort of like the first choice. So we'll do a B. I'm going to release into the vowel A. Okay, and I'm gonna, I'm, as I release into the vowel A, I'm gonna lower my larynx. I'll feel the larynx sort of dampen and stabilize off that plosive, okay? So I've got sort of this, this contracted position, it's healthy, and then with this position, with this stabilized position, what I'm gonna do is I'm then gonna pull it. I'm gonna pull it up through the vocal break, and the act of Getting the stability off the plosive, all right, and pulling it up through the vocal break into the head voice builds belt strength. It builds your head voice. It's 
a fantastic technique for getting chest voice high. Um, it radically transformed my voice when I first started doing this. So anyways, here it is. By the way, this is an integrated training routine, okay? It integrates the damp and release onset with the valve A with the melodic fifth siren. Those are the three elements of an ITR. My head voice again and then off the top you want to, what, what goes up must come down go up the top same movement damp and release off the top back down to fifth okay that's the integrated training routine damp and release put uh, um, into a the training valve in a melodic fifth siren that's one of many belting techniques that you can study, learn about, see demonstrations of, and do with the program. Now, to Claudio's question, there was no wind in my voice. Let's do it again. Listen, there's no wind. My vocal folds are compressed on that. Let's hope so. That was what I was visualizing. It's what I wanted. So I was twanging. Okay. So I, I had the physical mode, vocal twang was engaged. I'm um, inside of an integrated training routine designed for belting. Okay. So Claudio, keep working from the bottom up. Just make sure you're doing the right techniques. On the training program, go to the training page, the phase three. And then on phase three, scroll down, you'll see five strength building routines. Okay, five strength building routines. And the routine I just did, I think it's, I think that's probably number one or number two. But you'll get five belting routines on phase three of the training page. It comes with a video, I demonstrate it. All right, watch the video, watch me do it, then get after it. 30 to 120 minutes per session, three to six days a week, 45 to 90 days. Okay? And at the end of that, for most people, you'll be bridging and connecting, whatever, whatever, wherever you're at after doing that for 90 days, it's going to be great. Okay? I mean, it's going to be like a massive improvement. 